This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build your own website and beautiful online presence. From online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace has got you covered. I know a lot of you are artists yourselves and what a great way to get your name out there by building your own digital portfolio. Not everyone here is a web developer, but Squarespace is such a user-friendly platform where it's easy to understand even if you've never designed your own website. They give you plenty of nicely designed templates as options for you to choose from, but you can always customize them further to find the best way to present your artworks. Not only that, you can easily set up your online stores as I know some of you like to sell bookmarks and other printed goods. They also have a feature where you can upload your social media content like my YouTube videos directly on the website which can continuously be updated. So instead of searching for your social media in saturated platforms, potential clients and more people in general will have the opportunity to experience your art and your brand presented in a professional and concise manner which opens up so much more opportunity as artists to get noticed. So if any of you are interested in creating your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, you can go to this link which I'll leave in my description box to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code MianYani. Thanks again Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting fuchsia flowers. This was requested a while back and I finally get to paint them now, so like usual, let's begin by drawing out the shapes first. I'm going to begin by drawing out three upside down U shapes, one on top of the other and getting smaller as I stack them up followed by the stem attached to the flower. These flowers have four petals and depending on the growth stage of the flower, the petals would be open, but as it grows out more, it would slightly curve up like the one I'm drawing out here. This also means that the petals inside would be frilly, larger and a bit more opened. The stamens of these flowers are nice and long and I always love flowers with delicate stamens such as these. So I'm just purposely extending the stamens even further, but this is completely optional. For this next one, I'm going to show you the flower which is a bit younger. So the petals would be facing slightly downwards and the petals inside would be slightly more rounded than frilly. I personally like the first growth stage more and I'm going to be painting that one but you can pick and choose which one you'd like to include in your painting. You can even mix the two with the outer petals not curved up while pairing it with the frilly petals on the inside because those petals facing downwards are a bit easier to paint later on. Next, I'm going to be drawing out the extra elements. This is the flower bulb or budding flowers. This one is a bit larger. I made the shape a bit like an onion shape or something like a heart shape, and I added extra lines for the contour to give it a slightly rounder form. At the top, I also added the upside down U shapes, and this would be equivalent to this part of the flower, and the bulb itself is going to be the long four petals, which will open up to show the softer round petals inside. So as an example here, I'm just drawing out a slightly open version of this bulb so maybe you might get a better understanding of the growth stages. Another element that I'm going to add to the composition are the smaller flower buds. For this, I'm just going to paint an oval later with a tinier oval at the top or the upside down U shape for the attachment to the stem and the branch later on. As for the leaves, I'm going to make the leaves just slightly rounded but it's still a basic leaf shape and I'm going to place them randomly across the branch. You don't have to draw out the branch in your composition if you don't want to but personally I just find it much easier to find the placement of the leaves and scatter them with the branch in mind or else sometimes the placement of the leaves might not make sense. And after drawing out the branches, you can also start to place the other elements and see what type of composition you'd like. If you want to try out different compositions before painting, I personally like to do tiny quick thumbnail sketches, especially for the simpler flower paintings that I like doing as it gives you a plan rather than to face a completely blank page which can be quite daunting for some and for myself personally. Next here are the limited colors that I'll be using. Firstly, I have Jean Brillant No. 2 by Holbein, Quinn Red by Daniel Smith, Hansa Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, Thalo Turquoise by Da Vinci, 
And lastly, I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martins, and this is just to make uh, the color a bit more pastel-y, but you can also use white gouache or white watercolors for this because you don't really need the opacity. Before we move on to the actual painting, I'm just going to quickly go over the color mixtures. So firstly, I'm going to be using a mix of Quin Red and Jean Brilliant number no. 2 to create a pastel pink. Obviously, the more Jean Brilliant you're going to add into the Quin Red, the more pastel and lighter the pink is going to be. So this is up to you. And with this color, I'm going to use it to paint the bulb, which will hold the four petals. I'm going to paint the bulbs with a very thick consistency of this color and then with a clean damp brush I'm going to pull to create those petals which are going to curve up or down depending on how you want the growth stage to look like. And with this pulling technique you're going to be able to create a nice gradation between the dark pink and the soft pink of the petals. For the frilly petals inside, I personally would like to create a soft periwinkle blue, so I used a mixture of phthalo turquoise with quin red and a bit of white. Because I want the color to be more blue, I'd use more blue compared to the quin red for the ratio, but when the paint is still wet, I'm also going to add a bit of a mix with a bit more quin red to make a nice burst of purple colors inside the blue. With this, I am using a very thin consistency because I want to keep the colors nice and light in comparison to the pink of the bulb that we just painted earlier. For the stamens, I'm going to use a very thick consistency of the same previous pink and I'm going to use this with a dry brush load in order to create the really fine lines. You can also switch to a smaller brush for this as I'm going to do in the final painting. Then after this, I'm going to add the dots on the stamens using a mix of Hansi Yellow and John Brilliant. Next, I'm going to show you how I'm going to create my greens using this limited color palette. As you guys know, blue and yellow would make green, so this would be the base that I work from. And the Queen Red will be there to help mute the green if I need to. The Jean Brilliant, sometimes I like to also add on in order to make the green a bit more pastel, but that's optional. And using these colors, you can just play around with the ratio in order for you to create different tones of greens. So the more red I'm adding, as you can see, I start to create more of a brown color. And this here, I added more Jean Brilliant. And this is what the color will look like. This will be a good time and good exercise in order for you to practice a little bit of color mixing. So with whichever green you choose, I'm just going to add on to the bulb to attach it to the stem and you can also play around with the green by alternating the ratio to create your leaves. Next I'm going to paint the budding flower. For the base color I like to use a mixture of Hansi Yellow and Jean Brilliant in a very thin consistency followed with yellow green for the tip at the bottom and pink for the bulb at the top. I've made a little bit of a mistake here because the shape looks more oniony, whereas the top section should be a bit wider than the bottom, but I'm just going to show you through how I'm going to paint this and I'll create a better version after this one. So after that, I'm going to use the same pink in a lighter consistency and paint the lines while the paint is still a bit wet and it's just going to somewhat blend with the rest while it's drying but we're going to lay around more paint on top once it's completely dry while i wait for the bulb to completely dry i'm going to go back to the flower again and add an additional layer for light details i'm using the same blue mix and i'm going to add frills with the tip of my brush to add fine lines you can also use a smaller brush for this and i'm also going to add lines to distinguish the line of the petals with the pink I'm not going to show you how I'm going to paint the smaller buds because I'm going to basically use the same colors as the larger bulb. So it's going to be basically the same but a bit smaller. And before I move on to the final painting, I'm going to just paint another bulb with the correct shape this time where the top is slightly wider than the bottom and paint it using the same colors as the previous one. 
And after it's completely dry, I'm going to add a thin layer for the contour lines to enhance the form. You can actually create lots of different color combinations with this color palette by making slight changes in the ratio, so I'd suggest for you to do that because it's super fun. I've done my share of color experiments, but these are just my chosen colors for the final painting. Okay, so before we move on to the painting, here's just my attempt to fix the weird shaped bulb by adding an outline which fits the correct shape and personally, with a mistake like this, I'd probably just start again because it is a quick painting anyway, but here's just a quick fix if you can't be bothered because we all have those days. Okay, so let's get to painting. I'm going to make my green first, so I'm using the Hansi Yellow and the Thalo Turquoise to make a green and also a bit of Quin Red and Jean Brilliant. And I'm just going to play around with the ratio, adding one color to the other until I get the green tone that I'm looking for. I'm going to start with the light green and I'm using a thin consistency in order to map out the branch. And this is something that I've already planned that I want the branch coming out from the right side. And I also indicate small branches where I could place some leaves. So now I'm going to use the same green to start mapping out some of the leaves. As I mentioned before, I find it much easier to have a branch to work from. So I can imagine how the leaf would be positioned a little bit better. And the reason why I'm using light green in a thin consistency for the branch before painting it brown is so I can paint the leaves freely without worrying about the brown being a bit too dark if I want to place a leaf on top of a certain area. If I've placed the brown first and I want to paint a leaf like the one that I just previously painted, that brown might show through. So this is just to prevent that from happening. Next, I'm just going to prep the colors that I'll be using for the flowers. Firstly, I'm just going to make up the pastel pink. I want it to look quite pastel, so I'm adding quite a lot of Jean Brilliant. And I'm also going to just have my white out so I can create that periwinkle blue afterwards. For now though, I'm going to mix up yellow with Jean Brilliant in order for me to create the bulb. And with this, I'm just using a very thin consistency and spreading out the color until I've created that shape that I'm looking for. Just like how I've demonstrated it before, I added the green at the bottom and pink on top while the bulb is a tiny bit damp but not too wet so the paint can travel a little bit and create a soft transition of color. I'm just going to create another one here and do the same thing. If your pink and green is not traveling enough, feel free to move the paint around with a slightly damp brush in order to pull the paint further. Since I have the color mix already, I am also going to add a few of the smaller flower buds. For this, I'm just using the exact same color and I'm going to treat it the same way as I did with the larger bulbs. Once I feel like I have a good amount of foliage on the branch, I'm going to start painting the flowers. I started out with the consistency pink, then I'm going to use a clean damp brush to pull the pink and create light colored petals. And whatever pink I have left on my brush, I used it to paint the petals at the back. The reason why I don't pull the petals at the back from the main bulb is because I want to separate the front petals and the back petals so it doesn't combine into one giant blob. 
Next I'm going to paint the frilly petals using Periwinkle Blue, so I mixed my white with the Thalo Turquoise and I used a tiny bit of Quin Red or even take a bit of the pink mixture to add to the blue very slightly. And here I'm actually just switching the colors around to get the two tones. Or you can also dot the more pink mixture while the surface of the light periwinkle blue is still slightly damp, like how I've demonstrated it before. And now I'm going to do the same for the next couple of flowers. For the placement, I want them to have a bit of space, but also play around with the height difference of how they hang from the branch. But I want to make the left one a bit closer to the middle compared to the right one that I'm going to paint later on so it doesn't look completely symmetrical and now I'm just going to paint them using the same method as before and I'll get back to you once I'm ready to move on to the next step. Here, while the surface is still slightly damp, I also just decide to add some extra frilly lines. Some of them are just going to blend with the rest of the colors, but for the flowers that I painted earlier, they're going to stand out a bit more. But I don't really mind because if I want to soften them, I'm just going to use a clean damp brush and blend it with the rest of the flower. Next is my favorite part, so as you've noticed, I've switched to a smaller brush and I use a very thick consistency of the same pink mixture from the Quin Red and Jean Brilliant and I painted some long lines for the stamens. I'm going to follow this up with the yellow mixture which is from Hansi Yellow and John Brilliant and I'm just going to paint the dots at the bottom of all the stamens that I've just painted. So I've got most of the features and now I'm just going to create a very thick consistency green to paint the stems which will connect the flower to the branch. Now that the greens are completely dry and as you can see the colors have now faded, I'm just going to layer on a bit of detail. Sometimes I'm just going to paint on top to darken the color and make it a bit more saturated but for some I'm going to add textures like the midrib and the veins of the leaves. At this point, you can also add on to the composition if you feel like you want to add any more flower buds. So here I've added a few on the left because I felt like it was a bit empty. Then I'm going to follow this up by painting the branch. For the branch, I added a bit of green to the red to make a muted red color or something close to a brown. And I'm going to use this to paint the main branch. I 
think I'm quite happy with the composition here, so I'm going to start working on the details by layering the lines for the bulb using a thin consistency of the pink to again create that contour line. And I'm going to do the same for the smaller buds as well. This is just to add a bit more form. As you can see, the budding flowers look a bit more rounded this way. I'm also going to add the extra freely lines for the flowers and like usual I'm going to finish everything off with splatters. For the splatters I used a medium consistency purple mix but you can use any color mixture from your painting depending on which one would work best for your chosen colors. After I've splattered the paint with my brush, like usual, I'm just adding a few manually on certain places which looks a bit too empty for my taste. Then to finish everything off, I'm just going to add minor adjustments like here where the pink looks a bit too light. And that's basically it for this painting. I really love the pastel colors and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!